in 2016, Department of Interior came to Turbo Air in Boise, Idaho, and uh, commissioned us to do research and development into a camera bay into the floor of the Kodiak. There's a lot of things under the floor that cannot be shifted in a Kodiak, so we had to look at the most appropriate place, the structure, and minimize the things that we had to, to move around. So after a lot of research, we came up with this area right here, 29 inches from the baggage step to the front of the bay, and 21 inches across, meaning we would need to cut through some structure, the seat tracks, and uh, to, just to make it happen. So we got with our engineering team, and a structure was uh, developed, and we have actually installed a prototype structure into another aircraft, and uh, it's been completed. So uh, later on after this video, I'll take you inside and show you the, uh, the completed structure and a, and a camera pod that goes with it. This is a prototype camera bay in a non-flyable Kodiak. This is the original floor assembly that came out when the camera bay was installed. It's a very light structure but had to be replaced by a very strong structure. We have 1 8 thick C channels run all the way down to connect into the floor on both sides. We have C section across here and a reinforced bulkhead across the baggage step here. We have gussets picking up on the stringers through here. Side channels pick up on the bulkheads across here. And we have corner brackets and gussets reinforcing all, all the way around. Uh, the floorboards were modified in this area here. And we have the rubberized floorboards that are going to go in to replace the original ones. So that it will be uh, non-skid non-slip uh, floor all the way around the camera bay. When we were putting the floor in here, we had to relocate the items under the floor. Some of those were the uh, avionics looms that run all the way down the side of the fuselage into the tail cone. They had to be pulled back from up, up there. We had to pull back the float landing gear uh, hydraulic pipes, had to be pulled back and redirected further out through the lightning holes uh, the left hand side wasn't a problem, the control cables and brackets and pulleys weren't uh, modified or needed shifting at all. One of the specifications from the Department of Interior was that we don't lose any uh, cabin space or seating as a result of doing this modification. So in here we have a very strong structure and we were able to incorporate this plug-in unit. You can see that we've actually reused the original seat tracks, built a structure that literally plugs in to that hole. Along here we have 12 holes, quarter-inch bolts, each hole, and gussets on the end. So when we need to convert to passenger configuration, this literally drops in the hole, we come up from underneath and install the bolts. And that returns the full integrity of the cabin seating arrangement. The only thing that we lose is the ability to put a seat foot in one hole. So there's virtually no problem with having this, this unit on board. Once the uh, plug-in module for the cabin configuration has been installed and secured, this cover panel goes up and covers the space. We install all of the fasteners around the perimeter and it appears like there's never been a bay here.
This is a prototype camera pod mounted on an adapter plate which is bolted to the floor of the camera bay. Um, we have 15 inches available here, 14 across here and a depth of 7 inches so we can get that camera lens well down under the belly of the aircraft. The camera pod will be mainly made of composites and stainless steel to try and minimise any corrosion problems that it might have from the water spray underneath the belly of the aircraft. It's uh, electrically operated and the doors open up completely until they touch the belly of the aircraft so that we're going to minimise any air turbulence when the aircraft's in flight and that the air turbulence that could uh, potentially disrupt the camera lenses. The finish off for this bay here is the uh, rubber floorboards will be installed back down, trimmed to size and uh, and so we'll have rubber protective all around here just like the existing floorboard. In uh, passenger configuration we'll have floorboards down and you won't even be able to tell that there's anything changed with the floor of the plane.